Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, today's story, this story's been out for about three weeks now. But today's the first day where I, I actually watched the video. And this, the story and the video will be down below. This is about an 18-year-old boy, 18-year-old man, I guess you have to call him. Uh, they graduated high school. And you probably heard this. He went on a cruise to the Bahamas with his friends. So this was just at the end of May, three weeks ago. And he went to a cruise to the Bahamas. Cameron Robbins from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And once they got to the Bahamas, apparently there's cruises where you can go like on a, a ship that looks like a, it's, it's done up to look like a pirate ship. And I don't know exactly what the liquor situation is on these, these trips, these, these, these cruises. He took the cruise from like Louisiana down to the Bahamas. And then once there, they went on this, this little day long, apparently like cruise on this, this pirate ship. And there's a video now. And I heard this story, but I hadn't watched the video yet of him jumping off, intentionally jumping off. It was at night, and it was apparently it was a dare. And he jumped off the ship into the water. And the video, I watched the video this morning, and it shows him down in the water. It shows people are kind of snickering and laughing and cheering a little bit. His other, you know, kids, people his age. And they throw a life, there's a life, uh, life ring, life save, uh, life flotation device in the water. And he swims, this is at night now, he's in the ocean. And I don't think this, this, this day cruise ship is that far away from the islands. I don't know how far they are away from land at this point, but it's at night. And he swims, just swims off into the darkness. He swims away from the flotation device. During this video, there's a lot of speculation that there was, a, I think they said, a tiger shark. And you can see this in the video. As he's swimming off in one direction, you could see something gray in the water over here and the life ring over here. And he disappeared. And he is now lost. He's gone. And there's a lot of, this never found, his, his remains are never found. There's a lot of speculation that perhaps a shark got him. And it's a disturbing video to watch. I just watch this and I'm like, oh my God, what, what is this guy thinking? It does his alcohol involved? And as I watch this and I, you know, I, I find out that it's a deer. Yes, I'm going to talk. It reminds me of something. It reminds me of something an older gentleman that I worked with said to me when I did s stupid things like this. And I want to just mention that today. Uh, back when I was, I had graduated from a technical school when I was uh, 20 years old. And I got a job right away working for an architectural office. And I was 20, 21, 22 years old. And it was a big office. I was doing our architectural drafting. There was architects. There was civil engineers. There was interior designers. And one of the civil engineers was an older gentleman. Now, I was like 21 years old. And there was a couple other young draftsmen my age, other guys. You know, and we'd go out at night and drink and do stupid things. And... Uh, there was an older gentleman, probably in his 60s, probably not much older than I am right now. And I think back to what he told me after I did something stupid. And I, I, now it makes so, so much more sense than it did to me then. Back then, I kind of laughed at him and poo-pooed him, me and the other guys. But now, looking back, I, I, I think I was such an idiot. I don't know why young guys do this. This is something I did repeatedly. Uh, tempting fate, doing stupid things, dares. And I want to tell you what this guy said to me. So I had gone out to a party on a, on a work night, and it was my friend's birthday. And I drank, and it was there was a keg and lobster and all that. We were, they were uh, boiling lobster and all that. And I got sick. And then I drank more, chugging beer stands, uh, shotguns, all that stuff. And I went behind a tree, got sick, because you know, I ate so much and drank so much, and I drank more. Same thing again. Got sick, drank more. Got sick, drank more. I went home, and I was feeling terrible. And I took, a, I don't know, too many aspirin because I had to go to work the next day and went to bed. I was in work the next day at my drafting table, and I started feeling sick. My stomach was killing me. And I went into the bathroom, and I remember the light was really dim in there, and I got sick, and I couldn't quite see what was what I what I had uh, relieved myself of 
And I opened up the door and I looked down into the toilet and it was just all blood. Just pure, the toilet was filled up with blood. So I panicked and I just tell, tell my bosses, everybody else in the office, I gotta go. And I get in my car and I drive to, I start driving to, there's a walk-in center not too far from where I worked. As I'm driving there, I feel my stomach hurting again. I feel myself getting sick again. I'm driving by myself. I pull up into the parking lot and I run into the building, past the nurses, there's a nurse a reception area. And I ran right into a, a, an empty room and I filled that sink up with more blood. I was, I think at that point, the nurse came in and she just, she just backed away and walked. She just freaked out and backed away from the door. Um, and they called an ambulance and I was sitting out waiting. They brought me outside the walk-in center waiting for the ambulance. Um, I was sitting on the curb. I got sick again, blood again. And uh, the ambulance took, I remember sitting, laying in the ambulance and I asked them because I, 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 it started to feel like, it started to feel good. I, I swear to God, this is what I really felt. I felt relaxed. Like I, I swear in the Bible, I felt like I was going home. That was the thing that's, that was in my mind, like I'm going home. I, I swear, I swear in the Bible. And I asked the, the ambulance driver, am I gonna die? Or the ambulance, the, the guy with me in the back of the ambulance, am I gonna die? And he was just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and that's not something they usually say. That's not what you wanna hear. Uh, I got into the hospital and they just jammed. I remember it was an Afghanistan, like an Afghani doctor. And he was jamming a, a plastic tube down my nose and into my, down my throat and to suck out everything in my stomach. And uh, as he's jamming in there, he, in, in, that, in that accent, he's saying, how much did you drink? How much did you drink? You know, and I can't talk because he's jamming the tube down my, my nose, down my throat, and I, I'm trying to say a keg. And he's like, you drank a keg? Oh my God. And, you know, I was like, no, I drank at it. You know, I'm trying to say this while he's jamming in the, the tube. I was in intensive care. I couldn't, it was the, I remember, I was in intensive care for three days. Uh, I couldn't have any food, anything to drink. Uh, they put a camera, not even an ice cube, it drained my stomach completely. They told me if it didn't stop within a few hours, the bleeding that, they were gonna have to cut me. You know, emergency surgery, and luckily, thank God, it stopped. Um, they told me, they put a camera down and looked, and it, I had ruptured uh, an artery in my esophagus, a, a major artery, and it almost bled out internally uh, due to people daring me, stupid antics. So after a while, I went back to work, and me and my friends are sitting around, and I remember laying in that hospital bed, crying. My family's looking at me. I'm all hooked up to monitors and everything, intensive care, and I'm saying, I'll never drink again. I'll never drink again. And uh, I was drinking within five days. You know, this was the start of my my uh, tenure, my my years of uh, drug and alcohol abuse. And I was sitting. I, we, I, once I went back to work, me and my other buddies there at work were sitting at our drafting tables, kidding around. And the older gentleman that was a draftsman, he was a civil engineer. He was in his sixties, probably he bald, and he had a white beard, a small guy. And he, he, we liked him because he, 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 he had a very young attitude and he's very knowledgeable. But he was sitting there listening to us and he was listen, listening to me talk about what happened to me. And he talked about a right, he said, that's like a rite of passage. You know, we had no idea what he was talking about. I was 21 years old, 22 years old. And he said, he started to tell us about how, like, I, th I believe, this is a long time ago, but I believe he was saying, like, in Africa, that when a, a boy appro approaches manhood, they go on hunts, to, you know, like hunting lions or tigers. Uh, you know, this isn't exactly what he said, but he, he cited several examples, like with the Vikings, when a boy reaches that age, like puberty, that, you, you know, he passes, he goes through this rite of passage to become a man. And... And then he, he, so he continued and said, that's what's, what's going on in society. This was back in 1987, 86. He said, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. There's no real rites of passage. And young boys or men kind of do their own stupid antics to, to prove themselves as men. Well, this is just the stupidest thing me and my buddies ever heard. And we just kind of mock him in a, in a friendly way and laugh. 
and turn back to our desks. You know, and I was like, well, that's, that's so ridiculous, honey. I was just having a good time drinking at a gig. And I look back now that I'm that age, and uh, I'm almost the same age as that older gentleman, and it makes total sense to me. Um, I'll mention this one other thing, because with me, I had lost a lot of people. My father, my two grandfathers, my grandmother, and two of my best friends from high school in two different incidents. One was on a motorcycle, and the other one was a uh, motorcycle and skiing. I, I was skiing with a guy, and he hit a tree. And one was a pallbearer's at the other one's funeral. So I, I was very angry with death. And I remember I would drop my girlfriend off at night, and I had this thing with tempting fate. Like, I was so angry about all these deaths. And I would drop my girlfriend off, and I had a 73 Formula Firebird, 400 cubic inches in four barrel, functional ram air. This car was ungodly fast. Uh, I got a speeding ticket in New Jersey going 113 miles an hour in this car. I don't know if I talked about that in a video before. But every night after I dropped my girlfriend off, I would go down this big long hill 262 in Watertown, Connecticut. It's a long, mile long steep hill. And I would just floor that car going down the hill every night after I dropped my girlfriend off by myself, like tempting fate, like saying, you know, F you, come and take me now. And one night I had neglected changing my brake pads and it was down to the metal. And I went, you know, I was doing like 120, 125 down the hill and I went to slow down and hit my brakes. And I was going so fast that the, the metal froze on the calipers, the metal, the, the, the disc froze, like locked up. And the car started fishtailing at over 120 miles an hour. And I probably almost crapped my pants. Um, I just remember going past the exit that I was going to stop, I intended to stop at as the car was fishtailing back and forth. You know, smoke from coming up like a, like a race car on TV, and it, it wasn't fun or exciting. It scared the hell out of me. I never did that again. Um, so I don't know. I, I just I, I could go on. I could tell you guys like 20 stories, and I'm sure a lot of you could tell me stories too. You might as well tell me your tell me your rites of passage and stupid things you did uh, as a young man or a young woman down below in the comments. Uh, I, I, God rest Cameron Robbins. I, I really feel bad. I, I feel terrible for him. This is a, it's a horrific video watching this this kid think he's having fun and uh, you know not realizing how much danger he's in and just disappearing into the darkness. Uh, it, you know that could have been me a hundred times. Um, I, I feel I, I feel terrible for him and his parents. All right, you guys have a good Saturday.